So, um, now we are going to do an oil change. But before we get onto that, uh, I'm going to uh, grab your attention to something that I found out uh, while uh, I was uh, replacing the oil filter. Uh, so I just, re I just took off uh, the lid, the oil filter, and I just took this box off in order to just give it a, a bit of a clean later on. And uh, probably uh, a few minutes ago you remember me mentioning it about that little sponge uh, or foam um, uh, that was set below the, um, the air filter. Basically that is connected to uh, the uh, oil uh, breather case. Um, the crankcase or oil breather and uh, basically some of the oil that uh, that drips on to, to here and then in order to prevent it to being sucked up by uh, the air filter there's a little uh, filter element so I went online and um, have a quick look and I found out a replacement it is this one so it's uh, part number six six one four no it's 1694449. That's the part number that you should use uh, when you come in to replace that uh, piece of foam that is completely soaked up. So let's go and have it replaced. Oof. That actually doesn't look very good. So the ridged end goes upwards. Let's throw this in the bin. And then let's put the new one. But beforehand, I think I'm going to give this area a bit of a clean and then I'll put in the new filter on. Just using like a double grease. I haven't got any parts washer kind of products at the moment. And I'm doing this on the old oil pan because it's really the best place to. Uh, to do this sort of stuff. Just give a bit of a clean also on this spout here where the, um, the concrete oil breather pipe connects to. Just let it soak for a bit and then just rinse it off. It doesn't need to be a massive clean just really to decrease it for a bit. Okay now that I gave this a uh, good clean I'm going to put this filter element in here. It goes like that this way and pop it in like that. And there you go. That's done. At least it's one uh, clean thing. And this part only costs three pounds, really. So if you can do it, and if it's, it looks a bit dirty or anything like that, you might as well just do it and get it replaced because it's really quite cheap enough. And um, also, I found out that the, if you buy an original Ford air filter, it actually comes with that uh, little piece foam. Um, uh, I heard something about it. I'm not sure if it's true or not. But then again, if you buy a cheaper filter like I did and spend um, then another three pounds for original Ford pot uh, like this one, then you still be in the money. So I'm going to put all this back in and then going to get on with the oil change. Now, let's get on to the actual oil change. You now that's all uh, tightened up and everything. First things first, choke uh, the wheel at the back, lift off the car, secure it in an axle stand underneath the chassis. And then what I do, I just run the engine for a few minutes until in order to warm up the oil, then I stop it, then let a few more minutes to cool down uh, a bit more because it's much easier uh, to, for the oil to flow uh, uh, during an oil change and then what I do I just remove the oil cap and the uh, dipstick then I move on to the underneath where I remove the under tray there are seven bolts uh, that secure it in place five at the front uh, actually I say th basically three at the front two on the side and plus two more at the back and uh, you needed to use a Torx number 30 yeah, it talks number 30 uh, in order to uh, remove them. Once all that is done, uh, then it's time to put an oil pan in place so that there's no dripping of the oil and remove the sump plug, which is 
right here at the back of the car. There you go, here it is. But there is a bit of a problem with this sump plug. As you can see it, it looks a little bit damaged. I thought it was initially a number 13 a sump plug or number 14. I traced all of them, I couldn't uh, undo it. It's a bit of a problem which I have to address to at another time. So, and because I cannot undo the sump plug, I have to resort to plan B. And the plan B is to do the oil change from the top. I have actually, fortunately, an electric pump where I insert here uh, a pipe connected to the, the battery and then it drains directly into a recipient. But I'm still going to leave the um, oil pan underneath because then I will have to remove the um, oil filter, which is right over there. So let's just install and start to pump the oil from above. Now I'm going to set up the pump, which is something I didn't want to do because of what happened to the um, uh, to the sump plug. So I have this all set up. I removed the um, uh, the dipstick, connected the pump, make sure that is the correct polarity. Otherwise, uh, the pump will actually blow. Uh, uh, oil back into it instead of actually pumping it up. Now let's go for it. Now the capacity uh, of the sump is about 4.1 liters. So I expect to have uh, to fill up almost this canister here, uh, which is about five liters. And I'll just keep moving the drain pipe up and down several times to make sure that all, all the oil has been drained. Right, now that you're confident that you have removed all of the oil, so in this case you should be very close to five liters. It's not far from it, or this 4.1 liters or something like that. Uh, sometimes you have to um, push this up and down several times and uh, slowly uh, you, you have to lift it and just push it forward a bit more to make sure that um, it's, uh, it pumps out all of the oil because sometimes when you're just uh, using this, sometimes it, it feels like that you've um, you pumped all the oil, but sometimes when the, this probe is on the sump, it's facing could be facing upwards reach this oil level and it feels like so sometimes if you push it it might start to um, uh, uh, suck up a little bit more of oil so uh, but once it reaches the quantity about just over four liters that should be the moment to stop and make sure that all the draw the oil drains out now uh, the other part to do is to uh, remove the oil filter now with the oil filter make sure you have uh, the drain pan right underneath it because as soon as you start to undo it well, with a wrench a little bit of oil starts to um, to drain but I don't undo it completely I just undo a little bit until the first few bits of oil start to uh, mm -hmm. uh, drip onto the pan and then you know so that oil doesn't fall onto my hands and or even on my face if I'm on a, a car I'll just start to undo it from here. So I just insert my hand. Of course, you have have a uh, long, thick arms. Uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, just do it, and then just just drop it so it doesn't fall onto your hand or anything like that. It doesn't matter really, so most of the oil will have already been uh, drained anyway. So let's just wait a few for a few minutes until um, until that uh, finishes dripping, and then well, we can start to put the new oil filter in. Now that the oil filter has been removed, don't forget to give this area here a good clean as well, just to use a uh, some kit 
kitchen roll or something like that, just some paper, because this area becomes seriously dirty because the um, uh, once you remove the oil filter, there's always oil that drops down the sump, and then you don't want the engine to warm up and have that perman permanent uh, uh, whiff of oil constantly. But this is just a superficial thing that I'm doing at the moment because then in uh, in a while I intended to uh, do um, an engine wash, just pop a decrease and making it as nice and clean, and then it will get rid of any smells. Okay, so I'm ready to put the oil, new oil filter back in. As a customary, always dab a bit of oil around the seal, and then. I hate these oil filters, to be perfectly honest. So for several years I had cars that had a... They had a different type of oil seal, of oil filter actually. So you make it nice and tight, and then you just do three quarters of a turn. I have to clean my hands again because it's quite slippery now there you go it's all nice and tight I'm just gonna clean underneath and then I'm gonna start to put the oil from above now it's finally the moment of filling up this car with oil so for Ford uh, it, this is the oil, the 5W30 grade, and it's uh, not not just not just simply just any 5W30 grade, but this is one that is for a uh, Ford specification. So if you find a 5W30 oil for this car, make sure it is for the Ford specification. The grade is not everything um, that is good for the the cars. It's the grade and the formulation. Of course, if you are doing an oil change, just make sure that you put the sump plug in first and the oil filter as well. You don't want all the oil to come down the bottom. Otherwise, you'll have a messy driveway, a rain day, and a whole lot of trouble. So just let the oil settle for a little bit, for about a minute or so, because it does take a while for it to fully reach to the bottom. Actually, it does reach the maximum level. So it was actually bang on. Yeah, there you go. Actually, maximum level. So there you go. I just wait a little bit more. Okay, so I've started the car, let it run for a few minutes, stopped it, and I've had uh, the car rest for a few minutes as well. Uh, the reason for doing this is that so that the oil can get distributed through every nooks, uh, nooks and crannies inside of the engine. Uh, once you drain all the, the oil, the engine basically will be starved of everything. And once you fill it up, not every single component will be lubricated. Uh, bits, for example, like the oil filter, brand new, is completely empty. So by uh, starting the engine, you make sure that everything's pumped through the engine inside. And then, uh, whilst you wait for a few minutes, and not really let, uh, let the engine warm up, of course, uh, take the mm -hmm. oil cap off, insert the um, dipstick, and check for the oil level once again, which should have dropped just a, a little bit, because the... Um, fuel filter uh, actually the oil filter will have it and there you go it is just a little bit below uh, the maximum mark and um, it is actually just a, a 
tiny bit uh, above the medium mark. So that's it. That's what I wanted to achieve. That's all done on, at this end. So the first thing then I will be doing next will be just an engine wash, but that won't be today. That'll be for a different video. And that's it for now. Now we're going to look at a few bits that are related to the MOT advisories. Now, the second thing I'm going to look at, it's the uh, MOT advisories. Uh, according to the MOT advisories, uh, there was a few issues with the lights. First, it said that the front uh, number plate light was not working. There's no lights at the number plate. So I guess that was a typo of the MOT tester. And after looking into it, it looks like there's a light that is damaged. However, although this one is damaged, it's actually working. So it is that one that uh, is not working. So I have to replace the bulb, which is the bulb number 501 uh, that you use uh, to replace the, the faulty one. But first, I have to replace that lens over there. That one is broken, so I'm going to get a new one. There is a little tab inside here. I think it's been stretched quite a bit. It's a real pain to get it out. There you go. Oof. This looks quite manky actually. Has been used for quite a while. Just pop in the new one. This is actually not brand new. This is I bought it off eBay. And there you go. All done. And the same procedure as well for this side as well when it comes to replace the lamp too. Uh, the other thing that came also on the advisories was relating to these rear lights. Um, basically, it said that this one, it didn't give a stable um, a light or, or something in those terms. And also it did say that this one wasn't giving a right colour. Looking into it, it looks a tad orange actually. So, let's have a look at these lights. Just two screws, top and bottom. Looks like this hasn't been used for a while. This one clearly marked in orange as the um, indicator light. This is a bit of a green, really. I'll do this another time. And ugh, Jesus, that looks rubbish. Look at the state of that. So it looks quite nice and orange. There you go. It was way past its best. Now for these cars, for the Mark II in particular, I think um, for the Mark II you have to use the colored red lights. The trouble is, 
that uh, the uh, the lenses are clear so you would have to use uh, light that matches the color orange flaking over there and uh, it's the Ford number is one four eight nine nine three eight And uh, be, uh, pay attention because uh, these have a slight offset on the pins. There you go. Okay, there. This has a way to go in. There you go. it and don't forget that this tail light is also stop light so it has two filaments one for five watts and I think that one is for 21 watts or something like that uh, the indicator one is still fine actually at least it didn't come on the advisory but now that we have this open let's have a quick look yeah it's actually in good condition so it looks like it has been replaced not long ago. I wouldn't be surprised that the original tail stoplight um, was still the original one from when the car was Manufactured. I suppose with 100,000 miles from now, I don't think it will be that long, really, to be honest. I haven't seen bulbs last in more than three or four years or something like that, so I think 10 years and 100,000 100, miles will be a tad too optimistic. Now, let's look at the other one on the other side, slightly cleaner. So, let's have a look at the bulb condition. Ugh, Jesus. Now that one looks like it has been damn it. I wonder if people still see me just breaking during the night. It's just okay, this is the offset goes that way. There we go. Little tab here. Done. Let's check the. Uh... The indicator bulb. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's starting to lose a little bit of the film, the color film that covers the bulb. So I'm gonna look into it and maybe replace it at some point, but not yet. It still does produce light. There you go. 200 it is actually quite a simple job and I don't understand why people don't do these jobs as a MOT advisory because the bulbs uh, sometimes they can be expensive these ones because these red ones and you don't always find them on the um, usual places I find these for uh, less than a tenner uh, the pair at the GSF uh, using of course those um, discount codes that they throw uh, every time really because you never pay full, the full price for the stuff that either GSF or uh, Eurocar parts sell so that's it that was actually a very cheap way to do things now let's have a look at the lights actually let's just position this in here And a nice red color on both sides although it might look a bit orange 
uh, here, but that's because of the, the camera. And both lights working as well. Brilliant. That's two MOT advisories done, which in my opinion will make the car uh, basically uh, uh, with a clean sheet. Okay, the MOT was back in July, so never mind. At least it won't appear on the next MOT regardless. It's all done in the car. Um, all the maintenance bits have already been done. And, uh, ooh, what's this? Oh, I have a failing headlight. Weird. Well, hmm. I must look into that, actually. Okay, that's fine, because otherwise the car wouldn't have proximity if the headlight wasn't working. So, the, um, uh, the entry has already been fitted. The seven bolts went back into place. Uh, and I think that the, all the mechanical major jobs have already been done. I give uh, the car a good once over. Um, in particular, actually, the brakes. There was a bit of a rust here, in this area, it's quite bright in here. A bit of a rust in here. But it's starting to clean off as soon as I start to drive the car. It will get better, but uh, nevertheless, it's something that I will be uh, replacing at some point soon. And then I'm just going to the uh, cosmetic bits. Uh, basically, I'm going to replace the the, the hubcaps, the mini hubcaps, the wheel caps, or whatever it is, the ornaments. Uh, they should arrive in the post in the next few days. Um, plus, I'll be do I'll be just getting a cap for the windscreen wiper as well. And the last but not the least, excuse. That is a work in progress, which will be in another video. I will be replacing the fascia uh, with uh, the, the older worn one and splattered with chemicals with uh, something from a titanium model. So uh, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.